Hello, Electroheads. I'm Rich, and today we are talking about... What the hell are you doing? I'll take it from here, It's outrageous. Hello, Electroheads. Today we are talking about a subject... Well, it's not the sexiest of subjects, actually. However, it has actually overtaken range anxiety as a barrier to entry for a lot of drivers. So SeaTech, a company who make charging cables and electric chargers, have done some research, and 39% of people considering an electric car have worries and anxieties about charging, the location of charging points, whether there are enough of them, and that figure, even for EV owners, is 30%. But when you look at the cold hard facts, there's a problem that no one's really talking about and that's what we're going to talk about here today because it's been solved by some lovely Scandinavian people with magnificent beards. We're at the Schmuseum right now, Shmi 150's very top secret and brand new location for his awesome collection of cars and behind us we have his Taycan and our brand new VW ID4 family pro performance model, shout out to VW for sorting us out with that. And we're going to be talking about this secret problem, aren't we? Yes, but before we do that, okay. I think we should go a little bit more into the misconceptions, the scaremongering, the fake news, all that sort of stuff that your weird relatives will share on Facebook. Yeah, there's a lot of that that still goes on. I think every time somebody who's a bit of a petrol head sees a comment that says batteries can't be recycled, they just regurgitate that, don't they? And there's, there's a lot of these misconceptions that are going on. I want to kick things off, first of all, by talking about a biggie here, which is cost. Yeah, but that's not a biggie because it's so cheap to charge an electric car. You're not wrong. If you're charging at home, it's like 2p a mile compared to, I think, something like 11 or 12p a mile for a petrol car if you drive it sensibly, which I never would. And I think even if you use a really fast charger that's quite expensive publicly, it's about 7 or 8p a mile. So it's just much. always cheaper. So cost is cheaper. There you have it. Myth two, please, Ailish. Myth two is I actually just want to throw in the ring here. Charging times. Okay. Okay. It takes a long time to charge a car. It does. It takes a long time to charge a car, but you just need to be practical about it because a lot of the time, most people who have an electric car will have a home charger installed, which means you can charge your car overnight. You just can go to bed, get tucked up, have a lovely sleep, wake up to a fresh, full car full of energy. Yeah, so that thing about how like, oh, I just want to be able to like pull into a station and charge it in five minutes. Well, the fact of the matter is you don't even need to pull into the station because when you leave your home in the morning, the car will be fully charged. Absolutely. Myth two busted, people. All right, so myth three is also another big one that everybody is talking about is accessibility to charge points. Yeah, so there are more public charge points in the UK right now than there are petrol stations. Yeah, preach, preach. I had a look at the ZapMap stats that are released pretty regularly. And currently we're in late August right now. There are over 25,000 charging points that you could go to. That's a hell of a lot of charging stations. Now, some people might say that some of those charging points seem to be constantly broken or iced or used by people when you go to them. That is actually slightly true, you can't actually deny that, but the infrastructure is going in the right direction. So basically the infrastructure is improving at the same or a similar rate to the sales of electric cars. So myth three, busted. And finally, I want to talk about another very big myth that is circulating around, which is range. Range. That's not, surely that's not something people worry about anymore. Look, I know, I think people still aren't quite up to date with what is going on with EVs and where they are at now, but we have a lot of cars that are now available with over 200 miles of range. Yeah, like I think, I mean, even Elon Musk said that if he introduced a car with less than 250 miles of range, he'd consider it a failure. There's a lot of electric cars with over 250 miles of range. Model 3 has always got over 300, Model S has got over 400. So that, it is like going away, that anxiety. And actually, I challenge you to show me anyone that can drive for like three or 400 miles without needing a pee. For me, that's like, that's every 100 miles. Yeah, that's true, yeah, I, I can't lie. I do like to get out of the car and stretch my legs after a couple of hours of driving. So yeah. it just goes hand in hand. So if you pull up some, uh, some service stations, plug in, pee, get some food, 10 minutes, you've got some charge. I actually don't think range anxiety is a big thing anymore. Yeah. So what is it that we're talking about today? What's the fear? Okay, so what we're saying here is that these aren't really big issues at all. They're distractions. Look, if these were actually concerns, then why is it that 90% of EV owners say that they would buy a second car? 
and that figure goes up to 100% for 18 to 23 year olds. Yeah, so I think that is the problem. That's the hidden problem we're talking about. EVs, in a way, are their own worst enemy. Once you pop, you can't stop. So there's a, pr there's a problem that happens, right? I've seen this happen and we have Sorry, this problem. like Pringles. <laughs> yeah, like Pringles. I don't know what you pop, you yeah. can't stop. Eilish, yeah. <laughs> those are some great stats. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story, come with me. EVs are their own worst enemy because once you pop, you can't stop. Our story starts with a wife. She gets a shiny new electric car and she gets a home charger installed. She's happy as Larry or let's say Loretta. But then something unexpected happens. Her husband, her damn copycat husband, sees her new life of convenience and he decides he wants in on that. He buys himself an electric car. But does he get a charger installed? No, he doesn't. He thinks, I'll use Loretta's electric car charger. That'll be absolutely fine. But as I said, the most convenient time to charge is at night and they both want to charge at the same time. So now Mr. Husband Man, he has to drive down the road and park on the street and charge overnight and he has to pay to charge overnight on a public charger. His other option, he gets another home charger installed, but that would take up more space and it would cost more money. What an idiot. That was a beautiful narration, Rich. What can I say, natural storyteller. Absolutely, and that is a common problem that we have here at Electroheads, where we are usually sent more than one car at a time to review. Yep. And to be honest, all cars on the table, I can really relate to Loretta, because really? uh, Rich, you're always hogging the charger. I'm not hogging the charger. This is some serious shade. Honestly, this guy over here, he just does not stop with taking the charger, just driving it all around. He's no. not giving us a fair chance. All right, all right. Well, differences aside, we have found a solution. So one day when procrastinating on the internet, we discovered that SeaTech have created a dual output home charger, which means you can charge two cars at the same time from speeds of 3.7 kilowatts to 22 kilowatts. We wanted to try this out for ourselves to see if we should get one installed at our office. So that's why we're at the Sh Museum today. We found out that Shmi has one of these at the Sh Museum, which is why we're here today. And we are going to be charging the Porsche Taycan and the VW i4 at the same time, but I actually just stole the charger from Ailish. So let's get them both plugged in yeah. and let's show you the charger. But can I just quickly ask, um, a bit of bragging here, have you ever driven a Porsche Taycan before? Uh, you know I haven't driven a Porsche Taycan, so what? Well, uh... Everybody, I have. So if you want to check out my video where Literally I drive a Porsche Taycan around a track, well then click the link above here where you can watch me enjoy it. Oh, so, so sweet. Can I just say, like, this is what I have to work with. Banter. I just want one day. Banter. One day without this. <laughs> As you know, we are of course at the Sh Museum, and we have to of course say a big hello and a big thank you to the man himself, Shmi. Thank you. Hey man. So I want you to quickly tell me a little bit more about your Porsche Taycan. Um, how long have you had it for? So I bought the Taycan Turbo S probably nine months ago. I've been away for a bit of time since. I've only driven only about 3,000 miles in it. Okay. But it's been a massive learning curve. My first electric car, first time obviously learning the infrastructure thrusting myself into the deep end with it, working out how on earth to live with this. Sure. And safe to say it's been an interesting journey. Obviously things are evolving. The charging infrastructure has taken some learning and getting used to, but getting my own charger here at the garage, game changer. I bet, I bet. And having a dual home charger yeah. as well, that is the key thing here. And you know, we have actually used it. I daily drive the Taycan. So with all of those cars in the garage, I'm still going to and from my home to the garage in the electric car and on occasion we've had people visiting charging up at the same time and it makes it easy. Oh, it just makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It makes perfect sense. But I know that obviously you've had the Porsche Taycan. I know that you are fresh off the plane from Miami, rocking the yeah. sunglasses. Sunglasses still in place. Got the tan. <laughs> what were you doing out in Miami? Do you know what the last thing I was doing? Driving the Tesla Model S Plaid. Stop. The ludicrous. I, I mean, there aren't even words for it anymore. It makes you, we were at a drag strip. So I actually got to do a low, low nine second quarter mile. Stop it. Oh, that must have been so yeah. good. It, it makes you feel dizzy. The acceleration, it, it's, 
you know, I've been lucky to drive lots of very fast combustion engine cars. That is just something different. You're confused. You don't know what you've just done. So it's, it's, it's non-comparable, like driving the Plaid to any of these. But even, even to this, it makes the Taycan seem like slow. And that's not slow, believe me. That's really, really fast. You just get this absolute whack off the line. The acceleration is crazy and you're looking at your dashboard and you're at 160 miles an hour almost at quarter of a mile and you're kind of, how is that possible? And this is, you know, a large saloon, family, comfortable, quiet, daily car. It's like, this doesn't make sense. That is so cool, just the fact that you were in Miami doing that as well. <laughs> oh, not jealous at all. That is like dream, the plaid, please, please. Tesla, if you're watching, me, please, plaid. <laughs> cool, well, thank you so much for me. It was really Pleasure. good to chat with you. Thanks for coming and thanks along. thanks for having us here as well. Pleasure. Make sure to head on over to the SeaTech website and check out their EV charger options. But before you do, please hit that like and subscribe button just for Richard's storytelling alone. See ya!